Hello once again, it's Matthew here from Matthew North Music. Uh, thank you for watching my channel once again, and if you do like these videos, please like and subscribe if you can. I'm getting very close now to my target that I need so that YouTube will um, help me out a little bit. So uh, if you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to, please hit the button. Anyway, back to the video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this. Now, this is a boom box, and it's a very nice boom box. It's made by Panasonic. It's called the RXDS25. <laughs> Sorry, I had to read that upside down then. And this is from the mid-90s, 1996 these first went into production. And the reason I'm doing this video is I recently acquired this lovely piece of kit from my good friend Roger O'Donnell, who is the keyboard player in The Cure. Now, this boombox has a little bit of history because in the mid-90s, um, Robert Smith gave each band member one of these boomboxes. And I think that's a pretty kind gesture because, as we're going to see, this is a pretty nice bit of kit. Well, as the boombox of the 80s very much have the style of being large, big, grey and bulky, the boomboxes here of the 90s were a little bit more subtle. They were much smaller, they had rounded edges, they were much more compact, but nevertheless, some of them still had very good sound quality. Now, this one here has got quite a few features. It's got a CD player, it's got a cassette deck, and it's got a tuner. And the tuner is also, along with other parts of the boombox, operated by remote control. Now, I don't have the remote control for this. I have a feeling it was actually an optional extra. But the fact that it's got one meant that these machines were probably not just used for carrying around and using portably, but people were starting to use this sort of thing for listening to music in the home rather than using a conventional hi-fi system because you've got everything all in one place. So the first thing we're going to look at is the radio. Well, the FM radio has got this pretty tall telescopic aerial, which you can see goes all the way up like that, almost up to the height of my Amstrad. Another quick little thing, when the unit is in standby mode, you've got this little power standby button that comes on. So if we then switch the power on, it goes off. This is our main control panel then. We've got, as I said, our power button here. We've then got a tuner and band button, so that will select the radio and which band you want. This has FM, medium wave, and long wave. We've then got tape or CD selection. We've got our volume control there. XBS is like a bass boost. And we've then got our radio section here, which is our tuning up here, presets here, our FM mode here so we can stick it into mono if we've got a bit of hiss. And we've got a memory button there for storing the presets. Okay, so if I just hit the, uh, the tuner button there, and uh, you can see it's actually already tuned to something because I did preset some of these earlier on. I'll just turn the volume up so you can hear what it's it sounds selected like. selected as the donor species for many good reasons, one of them being that they're so numerous because we already use them. I'll go down to Radio 3. Radio 2. And Radio 1, which of course is louder than everything else. Played five minutes and uh, he's a bit Radio Devon. Free, uh, football League trophy defeat against Doncaster before now. There you go. Sounds the like a football match. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the radio is actually very good in FM. Now, I'm curious to see what we get with something like Longwave because of course, whoever listens to Longwave these days, but anyway, it's set to 198 metres. Now that sounds like Radio 4 that we were listening to just now and uh, yeah, you know, you can just about hear it but I have to say it's not exactly the, the best sound quality. I'm going to step through long wave. I don't know if we turn this if we get... No. Sounds like something from France anyway. But most of that's pretty dreadful. I'm going to now go into medium wave. Again, there's so much interference. It is at night in here and also I am indoors. Yes, it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, here we go. There's something you can just about make out. But yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think that... Uh, Amazing from the boys. There you go, Plymouth Argyle are in the lead on a football match. And you heard it here right there. So yeah, the FM radio works really well. Um, it's got good sound quality. There's quite a good bit of bass on it as well. Um, medium wave and long wave, not, nothing to speak home about. But I mean, there's hardly anything on there now anyway, so it's not really worth worrying about. But I do like the presets on here. And um, just being able to set what you want to listen to. And saying I'm indoors in a flat, I've got a lot of RF around because I've got my router and various other things, and it's still picking up the signal very clearly. Could the animals provide a reservoir for coronavirus? And it's getting it in stereo as well. And we hear why Disney's Whereas, also um, you know, my mobile telephone will not get a phone signal this far into where I live. So, uh, yeah, really good, really good radio on this. This is the CD player then. Press the button and it opens up. If you look closely, this is where the disc will actually fit, and there's our laser there. And you've got easy access, so if it needs a clean with some IPA and a uh, cotton bud, you can easily access it without too much difficulty. I'm going to pop in a CD. It's um, All Living Fears 15 Years After. That way I don't get a content and strike, and it should spin up. There we go. It's spun up. We're just going to look in on the display and you can see it's showing the number of tracks and the length of the disc. And if I press the play button here, it should start to play. Pop the volume up. And it's got a pretty decent sound, uh, a good lot of bass. If I hit extra bass, Yeah, certainly on the heavier setting, you do get a bit more feel to it. Let's turn up a bit more. So if you can hear me over this, let me turn this down. I had it quite loud then, and we were getting no breakup or distortion. It was a, a very good, clean signal. So yeah, that's pretty good. If I hit the pause button then, and it just pauses as you would expect, and you can flick between tracks, and then hit play, and flick to the next one, and that plays. I'm just going to whiz on a few more tracks in, and see how quickly it finds them. There you go, it took no time at all to find the track, so yeah, I think for a portable piece of kit, the CD player hits the spot. Again, if I flick the X space off, yeah, it feels a little bit thin now, and I've listened to it with it off. Yeah, that X Base 2 for something like this. Yeah, that sounds really good, actually. I really like that. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 for that CD player. I think that works very well indeed. Well, here's the cassette deck, and as you can see, it's an upside down cassette deck, which means the cassette's going upside down. Now again, I don't want to get done for a YouTube content match, so I'm going to play a bit from this. This is the All Living Fear Lockdown EP that we put out in 2020. Um, normally they're in a blue shell, these cassettes. This happens to be my own copy that's in a black shell. Pop the tape in. I'll just hit fast forward, go past the leader. That'll do. Hit play. So yeah, it's sounding pretty clear. The song will kick in in a minute. This is just the uh, the long intro. And it's got a good amount of bass on this. Yeah, 
that seems to be playing okay. Um, it's got rewind there, fast forward, and uh, record and play as well. I'm going to take this tape out now, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a blank in, and we'll just have a quick listen to see uh, see how it records. Okay, so I've just got a blank tape here. This is just a, a cheap Maxell ferric. It's actually one of the... Um, the tapes that richer sounds were knocking out just before lockdown they seem to have got a job lot of uh, blank type one tapes and i found these to be okay for what they are so i'm going to pop that in i'm then going to switch to cd i'm going to hit record and play <laughs> And interestingly, um, if you can hear me above that, I'm just going to turn the volume down. It actually started the CD at the same time that I hit record and play. I don't know if that was deliberate or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop it uh, there. I'm going to hit stop eject and then I'm going to hit record again and see what happens. And yes, it started the CD. So it's obviously got synchro recording built in which is you know it's quite cool and it's actually got this button here that says easy cd record so i suspect that's the mode that it's uh, it's running in so i'm just going to stop it again i'm just going to press easy cd record again let's see what happens i see so what it will do is it'll uh, suggest what size um cassette you need based on the length of the cd so say you need a c72 um which I don't think you can get, but I think you could maybe go in there and, I don't know, can you go up and down and change the size of the cassette? On there, or there, or there, or there. No, you can't. So I don't quite know the, uh, the uh, idea of that, but I'm guessing you may be able to adjust it using something on the remote control, because quite often with a lot of these things, what's on the remote control, there's more functionality than there is on the actual um, device itself. Anyhow, I'm going to rewind the tape and we'll just play a little bit of that back. Select tape on here. And there it is. So yeah, that's that's how it recorded. Um, not great, not brilliant, but uh, it, it it sounds okay. Um, if we go to the radio now, if I just rewind the tape one more time, and we go to say there. So that I would think would see Joe Edwards take up his Maybe usual. Maybe we'll find some speech. Parsons family asking go. Um, if he would take part in. So I'm going to stick in this, this into record died, because it's such a unusual request. Yeah, without question. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of thought went into this. We actually began thinking about doing this about two years ago. It was, you know, a, it was just a very thoughtful conversation. That'll do. That... Back to tape, hit rewind, and then we'll play it. Just wait for it to get past the leader. Request. Yeah, without question. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of thought went into this. We actually began thinking about doing this about two years ago. Was, and know, yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a hiss, but I mean, a lot of that's down to the tape because it's just it's just a tight one tape. But that's pretty respectable, to be honest. And certainly, you know, it's certainly not the worst recording I've ever heard made on a boombox and certainly not on a boombox that I consider more from the, the modern era like this. And most most people would have bought this maybe to tape the odd thing off the radio. But by the time this came out, mid 90s, People had sort of gone away from doing a lot of their own home taping anyway. They were buying CDs. We literally had the CD recorder around, just coming around the corner. And then within five years of this being produced, everybody was downloading MP3. So, you know, this is very much a playback device. We're just going to have a little look around the rest of it now. As we look at the back of the machine, it's a typical fare of this era. Um, we've got a little pouch here that we open up and inside there would go a whopping what looks like eight large C-cell batteries. Now also in there there's space here for two double A's. Now I'm pretty sure that will be for keeping the memory on the tuner of the radio. So if you want to keep 
keep all your presets preset then you have to pop those batteries in there but most of the time you're just going to run this off main so you don't need to worry about the big the bigger batteries and i don't know how well you can see it but on the end here we've got two little three and a half mil jack sockets there's one for an external microphone at the top and there's one for a pair of headphones at the bottom so if you want to record using an external mic then you have tape selected you plug the mic in and uh, away you go to do your own recording well, I hope you enjoyed watching this little video about this nice little boom box. You can find these on eBay at a fairly reasonable price and sometimes they turn up on Marketplace. And the only thing really to go wrong with them is the belts in the cassette deck. But, you know, if you need to put new belts on, then, you know, you can do it. And then you've got yourself a really nice bit of kit. So I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway. And if you have, please like and subscribe and catch me on the next one.